Hey, Rob here from Handmade Extreme. I've got a new addition to the workshop here. This is a Jones and Shipman 540 surface grinder. It's new to me. Now, I use the word new liberally. This has been sat in the workshop now for about 18 months, waiting for me to do something with it. So let's see if we can get it working. When these are running, the bed moves back and forwards like this. And what tells it to change direction is this little knocker here. And that's um, activated by these stops. Now, I can't remember which way round all these knobs and switches are supposed to be. So it's so long since I've been near any, uh, since I've been near one of these. So what I'm going to do is to prevent any accidents, because at the moment there's a good chance that's going to hit the wall. I'm just going to move these stops right in close so that if it does inadvertently start up and go on its own, it's only going to move. Oh, hang on. So that'll go there, that'll switch it back. It's only going to move that much. Okay, let's get a plug on the end of here and get it plugged into the rotary converter. Let's see if it works. Okay, well, it hasn't just leapt off into life, so that's good. Um, ah, okay, right, so that's that sounds like a pump running. That stopped it. That sounds like something else running. And that's stopped that. Uh, I don't know which one's which. Okay, well, let's just try. That's doing something. Ah, right, that's the spindle. Okay, so that, that does the spindle. Presumably that does the hydraulic system. Yeah, that's doing something. Right, uh, maybe the motor's going the wrong way. This is supposed to be going clockwise so that the sparks go that way into the spark guard so if that's going the right way or if that's going the wrong way then that might be why the bed's not moving as well so let's have a look at the spindle right so the spindle's going the wrong way so let's just swap two of the phases try it again because that probably means the hydraulic pump is going the wrong way as well Right, all you've got to do to reverse the direction of a three-phase motor is swap two of the three live wires. So I've got live one, live two, live three. I'm just going to pick any two and swap them over. And that will make the motor, or the motors rather, in the surface grinder go in the opposite direction. Let's just try that again. We'll start the spindle up. It should be going. Uh, clockwise from the front. So let's try that and stop. Yes, that's now going the correct way. Okay, let's try the, the hydraulic system. Oh, I just heard a, a thunk up here. That makes me think we might have built some pressure. So I think that one's the engage or disengage for the, the cross slide, but it's not doing a lot. Is that the speed? Okay, well something's, so if that's, that's changing over the changeover valve, ah, here we go, right, I wonder if I just needed to leave it a second to build up some pressure, right, so that's stop, this is the accelerator I think, yeah, so there we go, back and forwards, right, I probably just needed to leave it a few seconds to, to build pressure, right, okay, let's see if we can get the, uh, the movement going that way. Right, now I'm pretty sure that makes it go that way, and that makes it go that way. Right, maybe I have to put that, ah, aha, here we go. Yes! Right, okay, so this engages uh, that axis. If I do that, stops it. Right, so I can change direction now. Re-engage, 
Come back the other way. Brilliant, it's working. Fantastic. I've just had a quick look at the rotary converter and that's only pulling 1.2 amps per phase and uh, 5.6 amps off of the single phase supply. So that's fantastic, really light load. Really, really happy. The next job is to get a wheel on this and get something on the, the table and see if it'll uh, cut it. Okay, I've managed to track down one of these wheel adapters from a local company. What I'm thinking is there's a bit of an argument for the fact that modern wheels don't need balancing. So what I'm planning on doing is trying this out without balancing it, just leaving this in its default 120 degree spacing for the balancer weights. Try it out, see how good it is. And if I think the quality that I'm getting, the precision and accuracy is acceptable for the work that I need to do, what I'll do then is make some more of these on the lathe without the balancer weights, which will simplify the, the part a lot. So let's get this put together. And I've got a little turbocharger flange here that we can put on the mag chuck. And let's give it a whiz back and forwards and see how it does. Oh, this is left hand thread. Just pop the guard back on. Now, this wheel hasn't been dressed yet, um, but we'll get to that in a minute. For now, I just want to give it a test and see if it works. Okay, so I'll set the bed stops so that the machine travels far enough to cover the whole part so that wants to go out that way a little bit let's start it up and give it a go right let's bring in some cut let's try and get this to touch off let's try turning the wheel the correct way so that it brings it down Oh, there we go. Okay, let's go back the other way. Try a slightly shallower cut and a slower feed. As a proof of concept, I'm really happy with that. The wheel definitely needs dressing, even more so since I've just driven over a piece of rusty steel with it. Let's give this wheel a dressing. So I've got a little industrial diamond here. Uh, mounted in a V-block, in a vise, down on the mag chuck, so that shouldn't be going anywhere. This is just off center on the wheel, and we'll take the carriage across, and it will just cut some material off the disc, and what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that the circumference of the disc is concentric with the spindle of the machine, so there's no chance of it going up and down effectively as it's spinning round. Now, I should have done this before we did this, 
Um, but I got a bit excited and a bit carried away and just wanted to have a go. What we'll do now is we'll take a few passes across the turbo flange again, probably just come across halfway, and then we can compare the surface finish from the dressed wheel to the undressed wheel. It should be quite an interesting little comparison. Take it back the opposite way and kind of do, I guess it's a bit like a spring pass. So this area here is the area that's been done before balancing the wheel um, and you can see it's it's quite liney it's quite rough if I if I touch it I can feel um, there's quite a big difference between this area and this area this is this is like running my finger across like running my finger across glass whereas this is in comparison a bit more like maybe two and a half thousand grit sandpaper or, or wet and dry so there's, there's a big difference there that is smooth um, whereas that's got some distinguishable roughness to it um, now there's some patterning here which I think are little hot spots little burn spots um, I'm not using any coolant and I don't think I dressed the wheel quite deep enough to get the little bits of rust particles out from doing the first surface grind on the other side of the flange so I think they've probably just little burnt themselves into the surface here I'll obviously give that all a good clean up and redress it and whatnot before I do any proper work with it. But as a proof of concept of dressed versus undressed wheel, um, that is a really, really nice result. I think we'll call that a successful day in the workshop. I've got a few little jobs to do with the surface grinder now and I'll use those to familiarise myself with the machine. I'll probably end up doing a few little follow-up videos, so if you'd like to see those, make sure you hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Cheers, thanks for watching.